Welcome to Faith Revival Holiness Church, also Faith Revival Place International. I'm your host, Minister and Prophet M.G. Mays. Let us begin in prayer today. Father, we love you, we cherish you, we thank you, Father. We thank you for your sacred spirit, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the living God, directing us into all your ways of your word and all and making things better even in the natural as well as the spiritual and as well as the emotional realm of things we thank you father for it's in you that we have complete joy it's in you that we have complete healing and divineness of of going forth and doing great things we thank you, Father. I pray for the sick to recover, the blind eyes to open, for the hearing to be heard, and to be, and all those with all forms of problems that melt right away in the name of Yeshua, Hamashiach. I bind all curses off people that are born again. I bind all the curses of the enemy. I destroy them. I spit them out. I send them to hell where they belong. And I thank you, Father. I bless my brethren and sister in the name of Yeshua. May they grow in you. May they not grow in the things of this world. May they not worry about standing out because the enemy will, will make you worry about that. And that's the one thing you should do. The church should stand out. It should be really different from the rest. That's the way Yeshua sure, sure stand out. All the prophets sure stand out. All the people that we read of the past sure stand out. So why does the church think they have to blend in? We're not supposed to blend in. We're supposed to blend out. We're supposed to be different than the rest of the world. We're supposed to stand out and say and be a sign for the Lord and say, Come he hither and go to the straight ways of the Lord. That's what we should be doing. We shouldn't worry about blending in. We're not supposed to blend in. Well, did Yeshua blend in with the world when he was here? No. Did Isaiah? No. No, should we not either. And Father, we, let us be brave. Let us be strong. Let us be courageous in all that we do. Let us be followed the ways of the Spirit, of the sacred Spirit of God that is endorned in us, the, the, the saved. And I thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, for all that you do. Thank you, Lord, that we will feed on your goodness and your holiness. And we thank you and praise you. Amen. All right. Today we're doing the, more of the Torah literature series. Is the Torah uh, uh, Veira, and that's also the top part of the title ship as well. If his offering, if his offering is, but Veira means he called. God is calling us throughout the book of Leviticus. Leviticus is a Latin. But if you want it to go to English, from Hebrew to English, correctly, like it should be, uh, Veira means he called. So it should be the book he called. The book he called. Or just say he called. That's what the book really, the name of the book is. He called. He's calling us to his own and sometimes when God calls sometimes we don't always understand how why he calls certain ways at certain times are different and sometimes it can be different because we're not on top where God is we're going through what the Spirit of God is leading so we need to understand when God is calling we need to answer and so the but the title ship is if his offering of Leviticus which is he called the book of he called chapter 3 verse 1 through 17 4 1 through 26 of that 
And the word of God speaketh and saith, If his offering is a sacrifice of peace offering, then if the offerings before Yahweh, an animal from the head, then no matter whether it's male or female, it must be without default. And see, the Lord was without default because it was God in the flesh. Amen. And he is to lay his hand on the head of the offering, slaughter, slaughter it, and, and the entrance of the tent of meetings, which the Lord was himself that done that to for eternal, his eternal family back. Amen. And salvation and many, many things. Atonement. And the, the son of Aaron, the Kohims, are to splash the blood against all sides of the altar, meaning eternal salvation, representing the eternal salvation that Yeshua HaMashiach, the image of Yahweh, did for us on the cross. Amen. And he is to uh, pr present the sacrifice of peace offering as the offering made by fire to Yahweh. It is consecrated and in the fat covering the inner of the organs, all the fat above the inner organs and the two kidneys and the fat on the near of the flanks and covering the liver. And then, then he will remove the kidneys and, yet, and Aaron's sons will make it go up in smoke on the altar to the top of the burnt offerings, which is on the wood of fire and its offerings made by fire fragrance aroma to Yahweh. What was a fragrance aroma when you know it's going to have a little bit of a weird smell? The reason why, because that's a, a symbolization of what the Lord did. He, he healed our diseases. That's what it represents of what he went through. Because his internal organs were in a lot of trouble, if you remember right. He was whipped to death almost. He carried a cross. His organs were, sh were was almost shot, okay? Just like here. was representative of what he did, okay? So don't take something and say, ooh, and all that. But when it represents something greater, my friends, okay? So let's have a little respect for God's word, shall we? All right, and if it is offered by the sacrifice of peace offering, remember that's what he talked a lot about, is that he was the Prince of Peace, amen? Peace offering to Yahweh is from the flock. And then the offering is no matter whether male or female, it must be without default. And you know what? He sure was. It was God in the flesh, right? It could only be God in the flesh to get atoned for everybody's misfortune of sins and missing the mark down here. And bringing us back to the fold of, of being his kids. Amen. Eternally. And if it, it brings the lamb of the offering, then he is to uh, present it before Yahweh. And he is to lay his hands on the head of the offering, slaughter it in the entrance of the tent of meetings, and this, the son of Aaron will splash against uh, all sides from the altar, amen. And from the sacrifice made of peace offering, he is to present Yahweh with the offering made by fire, and the concept of fat, and the fat of trails with will remove a close lower uh, backbone. For the fat covering the inner organs and all the fat above the organs and the two kidneys and the fat on the near flanks and uh, the covering of the liver which is well will be removed with the kidneys. The Kohim will make it go up and smoke and I'll turn the food and the offering maybe far but you know what I know you ladies don't understand but probably read this some some guys are going to be getting hungry for steak probably. But you're going to have to wait for later, okay? All right, let's continue. And if if the, his offering is a goat, then he is to present it before Yahweh. And he is to lay his hand on the head of the slaughter 
and in front of the tent of meetings, and the sons of Aaron are to splash the blood against all sides. Remember atonement of all sides of our life, amen. And he is to present for for its offering, the offering made by fire to Yahweh, and it's to be constant of fat and covering the inner organs, fat above the inner organs, and two kidneys and the fat on the inner flanks. And the covering of the liver, and he will remove the two kidneys, and the coin will make them go up and smoke in the altar, and the food at the offer made by fine fire to the fragrant aroma, and all the fat belongs to Yahweh. Hmm. And it is to be a permanent regulation through all generations, wherever you live, that you will eat neither fat nor blood see God doesn't want to see fat or blood but that doesn't mean he wants us to have a fat free diet and kill our bodies in the process it's referring to just totally totally drinking the blood and fat of an animal I mean that's ridiculous we shouldn't do that right okay but it doesn't mean you can't have some on there which we need you do need and cook it properly and you know Quarterly and, and enjoy it, but it's referring to outright eating the fat. Okay, it's not even cooked here. Does it say it's cooked? No, but it did get cooked, incinerated when it went up to the Lord, didn't it? Uh, let's continue. And Yahweh said to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel if anyone sins, uh, invently against any of the mitzvah, the, the holy ruins of Yahweh. Uh, consec consecrating things which should not be done if he does any one of them then if it is it, but if it is anointed Kohim who sins and thus brought guilt on the people he is to offer Yahweh a youth bull without default as a sin offering for the sins that has been committed and we do that through prayer, through the blood of Yeshua Jesus. We do that for the atonement and, and uh, asking of, of God's forgiveness for the sincere heart. Amen. Verse 4. And he must bring a bull to the entrance of the tent of meetings before Yahweh. Lay his hands on the bull, his head, and slaughter the bull in the presence of Yahweh. And you might say, what would be the difference of slaughtering like a lamb or goat between a youth uh, bull. Well, a youth bull, both of these things, both the the, sh the sheep and the bull represents uh, two sides of what the Lord did. See, he, he also represented the uh, atonement of our sin, as of our different things that we could be tricked into uh, doing that could be sinful and that's the bull offering but the 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 lamb's offering is things that, that could not be helped that is this inherited God took away that took away but the bull is the things afterwards that is done because that's what it's saying here and so the Lord also atoned for that so he was the he was a lamb and the bull offering the Messiah when he died on the cross and that never gets talked about but it doesn't give you a license to, to just you know do anything either never does so let's continue uh, this started in, um, all right I think we're going to go on five here of uh, four of, of chapter the the anointed I mean the yeah the anointed Kohim to take some of the bull's blood bring it to the tent of meetings and the Kohim is to dip his fingers in the blood sprinkle some of the blood seven times not just once but seven times in the presence of Yahweh in front of the curtains of sanctuary and the Kohim is to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar from the for fragrance incense before Yahweh. You know, because it's that's what the Lord did. I mean, he lost all his blood. I mean, he was whipped front and back, and who knows how bad, really. And it 
we really we would break down and probably ball if we knew how bad it really was because that's how bad it was. But that's the same thing when he was whipped all sides, literally, um, for us. This is the same thing right here. Except in not as, you know, intensely as what he really went through. So there you go. And uh, in all the remainings of the blood of the bull, he is to pour out on the basin of the altar for burning offering, which is going to be really smelly, yes. But it represents his blood was poured out for us, okay? Which is a, uh, which is a, a, at the entrance of the tent of meetings, and he is to remove from the bull for the sin offering, all the fat, the fat covering the inner organs, the fat above the inner organs, the two kidneys, the fat on the flanks, flank steak, guys, okay, and then the covering of the liver, some people like liver too, that's pretty good too, right, in which he will remove the kidneys and remove the ox, a sacrifice as a peace offering, so it goes from a sin offering to a peace offering, Amen. And then it becomes a blessing offering next. Of course. And then the Kohim is to make each part go up and smoke on the altar for burnt offerings. Because his whole body was a sacrifice of love for all of us. So that we, and he ripped the bell so that we can become holy as he is a holy God. Amen. Because that's, that's part of being a human being. It's to be holy as your Lord thy God is holy. Amen. But the bull uh, head, hide, and all its flesh will be uh, it head and the lower parts of the legs and inner organs and, and done. Is the other, other words, an entire bull he is to bring outside the camp and clean place where the ashes are emptied out which that happened to the Lord. He was brought to a clean place outside. You know, remember that? And they, there he uh, burned it with wood and fire, and there the ashes are emptied out and burnt up because it's a holy thing. You just don't leave it to, you know, right? You put it in something in a holy place. This is the Lord for three days and three nights. We're in a very, very holy um, coffocus, so to speak, you know, a place where the boulder was on top, and then there was an open space cave where he was, and he was wrapped up with all kinds of spices. They were very expensive in that day. Um, we'd be crying if we had to buy all of them. So they were that expensive of that day. Let's continue. And if the entrance of, of the community of Israel, uh, uh, Advance made a mistake with the assembly being unaware of the matter. They do something against any of the mitzvah, the holy ruins of God, uh, considering things which should not be done, they are guilty. And when the sin they have committed becomes known, they then the assembly is to offer a youth bull again, as a sin offering and this is after the fact amen before the fact was a, was was going to be a a sheep or a goat amen do you see how the lord took care of everything but we gotta not do license to do the wrong thing just because we see how great of a god we really serve amen all right let's go on here and their hands on the bull and heads and slaughter the bull in the presence of Yahweh, and in the anointed uh, Kohim, Kohim meaning the set apart priests of God, is to bring some of the full blood of the ten of meetings. The Kohim is to drip their fingers again in the blood and sprinkle it seven times, not just once, but seven times. In the presence of Yahweh, in front of the curtain, and he is to put some of the blood on the horns of the altar, and the horns represent the authority of God and the four corners of the universe, literally. I mean, it's, it's representing quite a lot there. 
um, and there is the ten of meetings and all the all the uh, remaining the blood he is to pour on the basins of the altar uh, and which is in the interest of ten of meetings and he will remove all the fat and make it go up and smoke in the altar and he is uh, this is what he is to do with the bull and he must do the same with the bull as he does with one of the sin offering and thus the Kohen will make turn the page here atonement for them and they will be forgiven and he is to bring the bull outside the camp of and burn it as a burn uh, for the first bull and and the sin offering of assembly amen and then the leaders of and and then the leader of, of, of the sin and are in a void does something against any of the mitzvah holy runes of God con considering things which should be not done he is guilty and if the sin which he commits before before knowing him he is to bring an offering of male goat which to fall and lay its head on the goat and slaughter it did you notice it says be, before he knew he did it okay that's why it interchanges now to from from a, a bull again now to a goat but not a sheep because it's it's someone that's consecrated before the Lord, but he didn't exactly know he did something. So it's it, it's interchangeable to a goat, um, which he was a sacrifice of atonement for those that don't know they done it, but they're in in authority or or, or they're doing things. Uh, they're say, but they're in authority of doing things, and so he. He's also not only the Lamb of God, the go the, but he's also the goat sacrifice too, and also the bull. So he's done many different things. He's, he's many. He's he's a multiple sacrifice all in one. And when God does something, He does it perfectly, as you can see. And then the, let's see where were we? We're uh. I think we're in 23 and if if the sin which he commits before knowing him he is to br bring the offering of a male goat without default and he is to lay on the goat's uh, head and slaughter it in the, in the place where they slaughter the burnt offerings and the presence of Yahweh and is a sin offering and the Kohim is to take some of the blood of the sin offering with his fingers and put it on the, the horns of the altar and burn offering and remaining pour uh, pour the uh, on the the basin of the altar and the burnt burn offering and all the fat to to make go up and smoke like the fat of the sacrifice of peace offering so it goes from of atonement to peace, okay. Atonement. That's what he does. He he atones for us, our our iniquity of of the past things, and also things that we might know not know about, and things that we do know about. He's the he atones, and then it, when it atones, when we have the right heart about it and mind about it and ask for forgiveness totally forgiveness ask then that you notice it switches from uh, atonement atonement of sin to peace offering automatically it switches to that you notice that it's very important to see that because God doesn't want it to build up into guilt or the devil to come and use that as a little leverage to bring you back into another type of, of uh, misfortune or, or missing the mark, which is sin, basically. Thus, the Kohim will make atonement for him regarding of his sin, and he will be forgiven. And he will be forgiven. But, you know, in the forgiveness, there's peace. Do you understand that? That's just not beautiful. So it switches from 
atonement to peace because now we have peace in God because we know what he did in the sacrifice for us. You see that? And then also, it doesn't hit on this, but after the peace of, after the atonement act, uh, uh, act that God did for us, eternally for us, and then became a peace offering for us, then comes blessing. Then comes blessing. So you got the atonement of sin down to the peace offering down to after that later down the line blessing you see you see how God is great and greatly to be blazed see you know so you don't do icky poo and say oh I won't read certain things no because all these things in the Bible are beautiful and if you understand if you just stretch out and pray to the Lord and say Lord Spirit of God and get a hold of people that are anointed by God to, 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 to help you lift you up so you can understand there's so much more in the word to learn and to, and to grow and, and to understand that symbolization is very important and you should never overlook it you should never overlook anything in the word everything in the word even when it, it kind of gets a little graphical you know about I yeah about the organs and the drippings and all that stuff but you know and I, I understand for you ladies that can be a little more intensely but for guys we think about maybe having a steak or liver or some chicken you know with our toppings or you know something like that but I know for you ladies it can be a little bit more emotional experience here and that but know that all these are symbolizing wonderful things that Yeshua actually did on the cross of Calvary and and it's very important to understand these things ladies as well as gentlemen out there about these and 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 young, young, young people you know as well amen so I would like to pray for those that like to be saved. You know, you're Arabs out there, and I know you listen, and you're my brothers. You're from the seed of Abraham, too, and I love you. I don't like you hurting people and all that and hurting yourself and your women folks. If I catch you, you're going to be in trouble, too. But don't ever hurt the women folks, man. There's no excuse for it. And you women shouldn't be hurting men either. I, I never heard such generations of today because they also, women will hurt men. And uh, that's kind of previous generations, four generations back. You probably never hear about that. But today's world, it actually does happen. But anyways, you could be atoned from those things. If you've done next to those things, you need to ask forgiveness of the person that you did it to, first of all. Second of all, you need to atone for those things. You need to say, Lord, I, I don't want those things of the past. I want to go forward to the things of you. Amen. So are you ready to get saved, Arabs? Are you ready to get saved, lukewarm Christians and Jews? And when I say lukewarm, you, you have chosen to take the doctrines of men and women of this world in with a little bit of the doctrines of God, but more of theirs. And therefore you become lukewarm in those things and the rest of the world you know the great the great east you know you came from abraham you know and uh, you, you you it's good to know your heritage okay you know native americans my my brothers from gad and benjamin and a little bit of judah my native american brothers uh, all throughout South America, and, uh, you know, you know, Manasseh, Gad, and Benjamin again, and Ephraim, uh, Puerto Rico, my, all the islands of the sea, a little Ephraim in there, and some other things mixed, and all throughout the world. Are you ready to get saved? Are you ready to get the full atonement of all things? Well, just pray this prayer. Dear God, Yahweh. Amen. Dear God Yahweh, I ask you into my spirit, soul, and body as Lord and Savior of my life. Love you very much, Yeshua Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm proud of you, my brother and my brothers and sisters. Today is the day of salvation for you. 
Today is a day when all the angelic forces of heaven are praising the Lord and all your brothers and sisters in, in heavenly places are praising the Lord, as well as God, as well as me. And every, But everybody has a different way of expressing it, of course. Some people are real oh, boisterous with joy and others are more inward uh, with the joy in their sparkling of their eyes and you know so people express joy in different ways as you know but congratulations welcome to family god let me pray for you further father i pray for them i i thank you father for all that you do for their lives i thank you lord that you, they are our brethren they're part of our family now and we pray for their a successful life with you we pray that they be baptized in the Spirit of God right now, that they remember to be baptized in water later down the line, representing their continued commitment with you and cleansing of their heart and mind of things of the past. Furthermore, and I thank you, Father, and bless my brethren, my little brothers and sisters, in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. And I bless you with Psalms of 91, Psalms 119, and Psalms 105, in the name of Yeshua. Be blessed. And, and may Psalms 150 uh, be always in your heart towards the Lord. Amen. And may uh, Proverbs 3 be uh, of remembrance be upon your mind as well as the whole book of james the first uh uh peter and second peter be with you as well as you uh you further look at the atonement of, of what the gospel of john talks about and then first and second epistle of john may you be blessed may you be whole may all things grow good in your life and you have pro good growth in the Lord we thank you Lord amen and and those that need a healing the the atonement of healing that he did on the on the cross of Calvary being the Lamb of God be upon them today eternal healing and I thank you father let's end with the Shalom prayer Shalom 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 hold us brings peace the past is on and sinning none that's ever never broken complete peace of God I leave you the Prince of Peace, the the Prince of Peace, the offering of peace, God Almighty, Jesus Christ, be upon you as he atones us, as he cleanses us, as he is our sheep, our goat, and, and, and bull offering of atonement for all things of our lives. And I thank you, praise you, amen. God loves you. Remember, great is he that is in us than he is in the world. So this become great again, church. This become great again, synagogue. This become great again, kingdom of Israel. Praise God. I love you. God loves you. And greater is he that's in you that is he in the world. So let's be strong. Let's be bold. And let's kick some devil butt out there. I love you. God loves you. Shalom.